Prabhu, uh, you know, in terms of compliance now, in terms of getting people to actually file their returns, and this is the exercise that the government is now working on, uh, what do you believe in your assessment is the issue that we're facing today? I think one of the key issues <clears throat> that is facing the compliance is the fact that we should all accept that there have been tax uh, evasive accounting uh, pre-GST. Uh, transactions in cash hmm. have been going on historically and uh, under GST it doesn't make any sense or it's not profitable to do uh, transactions in cash yeah. because then you lose the input tax credit. Now traders right. and businesses to me have been under the, uh, the apprehension that if they have closed their books as on 30th of June uh, with a certain mm. uh, turnover, which is with a cash component, they, how do they move to 1st of yeah. July and declare the entire turnover? Will the government open their yeah. books, which is a provision mm. provided for, mm. uh, then it becomes a bit of an issue. Not only that, then it, they open up books for income tax as well. So the whole retrospective tax inquiry, I think, has been a major deterrent. Yeah. For compliance but Mr. And Mr. Drabu, uh, you, you, and you raise, raise a valid point, sir, but I was given to understand that this was an issue that the GST Council was to, to deliberate on in your last meeting, which happened on the 6th of October. So has there been any discussion on whether the government can provide some assurance on uh, that there will be no retrospective investigation into uh, business done under the VAT regime, for instance? I think it has come from the highest level. The Prime Minister spoke about this in, the, uh, in his lecture at the company secretaries, where he said that there shall be no mm. retrospective examination. <clears throat> the GST Council also kind of discussed it, but you must appreciate the fact that you cannot actually bring out a notification saying that we will not do it. However, yeah. assurances have gone right. at the level of the Prime Minister. Also, I think even uh, you know, finance ministers must have communicated to the various stakeholders that this was discussed in the GST sure. Council and an informal gentleman agreement has been that, look, what has happened in the previous regime, let's not get <laughs> into that now, let's see how compliance works post yeah. GST regime. Because it's a historical fact and it's not that, uh, you know, we, we have suddenly yeah. stumbled upon it or discovered it. So I think that's one part of it. Second, I think, sure. is the whole thing of getting used to it, accounting norms which you follow for businesses. Yeah. A large part yeah. of businesses so far yeah. have been mom and pop shows, not uh, with accounting standards hmm. and all. So suddenly you find a certain degree of compliance has to be done, accounts have to be maintained. You will see, yeah. I mean, even if you take a slightly different angle, almost 30% of Indian businesses mm. operate with savings accounts, not current accounts. So the way the informal yeah. banking is yeah. done, the, uh, subsequent uh, accounts, mm. business accounts are not formed. It is a bit of a stretch to actually move from that to, to a GST regime, which is where there has been some uh, yeah. delay, you know, kind of delay in, the, in uh, meeting the compliance norms. Well, I think you raise very valid <coughs> points there, Mr. Dabun. Let me go across to Thomas Isaac from the state of Kerala, the finance minister. Mr. Isaac, A, uh, this gentleman's code that Mr. Hazib Dabu is talking about, have you been able to uh, suitably send out that message within the tax, uh, tax administration in your state, sir? And B, uh, what is the state doing to ensure uh, that you do get more people onto the GST and, sir, to adopt to the GST? If you can also share with us the latest numbers as far as the state of Kerala is concerned, for instance I broadly agree with what Hazib said but it must be admitted that um, the, the for the small suppliers for traders and manufacturers the yeah. demands for compliance is compulsory yeah uh, they are not used to it hmm. since I guess the council accepted hmm. that by saying they need to give only quarterly returns payment quarterly and so yeah. on. Why? It's a recognition of the fact that for small dealers there is a real problem over there. So that is something that has yeah. to be kept in mind. It's not a very so, simple so process. So as you're it's saying, Mr. Isaac, process. you're saying that the GST Council is cognizant of the fact that the, the compliance process was cumbersome at least for small businesses and you've hence taken the decision to allow quarterly filing, etc. Do you believe that now uh, a large part of that pain has been addressed by the decisions that the Council took on the 6th of October? Yes, I think uh, largely uh, it has been addressed too, but still there would be problems. See, suppose 40% of the deal, uh, suppliers give nil return, 30% do not, uh, so that means something like 70% of the entire registered GST and 
uh, suppliers, uh, there is some problem to be okay. addressed to. And certainly, we are going to look okay. into it. But I think it is important government okay, so makes saying... available free of cost yeah. accounting package for the small dealers, uh, which yeah. they can use free okay. of cost. It's very, very important to have that. Okay, make an Okay, make an accounting package yeah, available free of cost, at least for small, yeah, small that, traders. A... Uh, very quickly, sir, before I, before I get to Mr. Mervyn Godino, who's also with us, uh, Mr. Isaac, uh, what is the degree of shortfall uh, that you've seen in terms of revenue collection, sir? Because uh, what, what the member CBEC told me was that, in fact, uh, on the compensation CES side, they've actually seen a surplus, and they have already started to refund states for any loss of revenue. Uh, was there a loss of revenue for the state of Kerala? There's something like 25%, but it's a short term. In the okay. sense, I have spent being okay. a consumer state, destination state, IGST, yeah. and I, yeah. uh, IGST would continue to increase over the months, and we should be very shortly another three, four okay. months out of uh, compensation. All market. right. Okay, that's, that's good news and that's good to hear. But let me bring in uh, the voice from Goa. Mr. Godino joins us. Mr. Godino, uh, we've spoken about several issues that have already been addressed uh, by the decisions that have been taken by the GST Council. In terms of the pending issues uh, that you believe require redressal uh, to ease the compliance burden further, uh, perhaps even look at further rate revisions, because that is what we're given to understand is on the agenda of the next meeting. At least the items in the 28% slab are likely to see more revisions. What what is the priority going to be now as far as the council is concerned? Uh, as far as uh, we are concerned, in the sixth meeting itself, uh, a committee has been constituted uh, to exactly look into the issues mentioned by you so that we have more rationalization as far as the ta tax slabs go and the commodities go. Yeah. Uh, if I may slightly hmm. move back to what you were saying, we must realize one thing, the GST data uh, per se shows that uh, almost 70% of the tax base contribution is hardly 2%. But these are the people, yeah. small people, who actually are very integ integral to our economy because they are the small people who generate yes. jobs. They are the people who yes. do businesses. And there are compliance issues because these uh, small people though they contribute so much in terms of employment and actual economic activity happening, in yeah. terms of revenue collection, yeah. they may not be so high. But hmm. we have to look into sure. issues of compliance because they were just not used to a regime because they used to mostly deal in yeah. cash. So how do you expect them suddenly to comply uh, with the two, three uh, e-filing forms and uh, go through a whole uh, gamut of... Hmm. Uh, uh, filling forms and uh, going through the rigors of uh, complying according to certain dates. So they find something uh, sure. something new coming to them. So it automatically it is okay. understood that it does take some time. And we have to look at, uh, look at uh, those small businesses because ultimately they are very okay. important to the economic ecosystem. And uh, while there has been, uh, uh, I would say, uh, good collection from all the other 20% yeah. who contribute the uh, major share to the exchequer through the uh, which has also come about with the, the GST implementation. I think uh, issues right. which uh, need little bit of uh, smoothening, uh, little bit of uh, mm. rationalization of the tax slab itself, like we say one country, one tax, but how many slabs do we have? Ultimately, yeah. we have to come so to let me, a let me then, where we have I, one let or me two come slabs. to you, sir. Let, let me then put a very straightforward question to you, sir, because the finance minister also has several times over said that he hopes that we will see a convergence, if not to one rate, to at least two or three rates. Do you see the possibility of that? Say over the, you know, as we uh, head into the new financial year, do you believe that the council could even explore the possibility of a convergence as far as the rates itself are concerned, Mr. Godino? Yeah, ultimately we are looking on uh, to the overall buoyancy in the whole uh, revenue collection. If there is good revenue collection, mm. if we meet the targets, and uh, I see that uh, I see no reason why we should not meet the targets. If we meet the targets, then certainly okay. there would be reason for us moving to two or three slabs. And I hope we move to that situation soon. There are ev there are every chances okay. of uh, we moving to that situation. I don't see why we cannot do that. 
and i think uh, there how is soon? a meeting of how soon? let me put that question let me ask you sir how how soon do you see the, the convergence to two rates if not one sir uh i would not hazard a guess but uh, i would uh, safely okay. say uh, let me let me get it, it, let me it needs at least uh, a couple yeah. of months or more to move to that uh, particular situation couple of months okay that 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 sounds pretty uh, pretty optimistic let me put that to mr dabu mr dabu couple of months to actually uh, move to a convergence of uh, uh, of two rate of a two rate structure sir do you, do you share mr godino's optimism no of course not <clears throat> i don't think that is i mean uh, i don't think that should be done also i don't think it's desirable you can't keep changing this one thing of course that will happen is that the 28% bracket will be trimmed down there no denying that i think it will come down hmm. but eventually hmm. the uh, it has to be a it can't be a two rate structure whenever it happens it has to be a three rate structure yeah. in terms of the main gst rate which will uh, come out of collapsing 14 and 8 12 and 18 which is like 14 and a half somewhere there right. and then you will have the yeah. merit good rate of 5% and a demerit rate of 28% so it will be a three band which is yeah. globally accepted so the idea really at this point of time even if we don't collapse the rates would be to increase mm. the 12 18 bracket and reduce the 28% bracket okay. which is causing a lot of concern i think that's where uh, okay. the focus of so, uh, our thing in the gst council should lie Okay, so prune the list under 28 percent, but you don't see us moving to a three-rate structure uh, any time soon. But uh, let me ask you, uh, Thomas Isaac, about the possibility of uh, the items that are currently out of the ambit of the GST being brought under the ambit of the GST. I'll specifically ask you about petroleum products because today we've got the Vice Chairman of the Niti Aayog saying very clearly that he believes that by the budget next year we should be in a position to bring petroleum uh, under the ambit of the GST is that uh, the direction that the GST council is likely to take sir now after constitutional amendment uh, it is for the GST council to decide when petroleum products should come into the uh, the spectrum but yeah as long as the central government is willing to compensate for the loss fully as in the case of other yeah. commodities we can definitely consider that mm. to start to set the atmosphere for that let the central government mm. reduce the mm. uh, excise r tax rate they raised uh, since they came to power uh, since uh, they, 3 years back right they yeah, yes, have yeah, they have yeah, they've just brought rupees. down the excise duty uh, yes. sir yes. yes but are you they were they, they to increased through, they increased the, they have cut back no they Is increased they are going to cut sir they increased no now let me answer you they increased the excise duty by 14 rupees for uh, diesel then yes. reduced it by 2 rupees and say you have reduced it eh? what about the other four, uh, other 12 uh, 12 rupees per liter in fact simple the simple question sir will no, you no, cut no, vat no, no, sir no. will kerala cut vat I, i i i will not cut vat until central government reduces okay. the tax excise duty they increase that's my condition i never raised my tax rate okay so no for the state of kerala in the last okay. four years there has been increase in the rate of uh, tax in fact do you know what is the present existing okay. incidence of excise tax 61% yeah you can put and see which state mm -hmm. is putting embos in mm -hmm. 61% after imposing an mm -hmm. effective rate of 61% to the basic um, cost of the petrol and diesel okay you are saying okay. the state should reduce the rate right. no no way okay let me let, let no way no way uh, movin godino will uh, go up follow maharashtra and gujarat and bring down the vat rate on petrol and diesel in fact uh, if you see the rate of uh, these two commodities in goa it is the lowest uh, we we are uh, less tax okay. than the rest rest of the states Uh, earlier uh, when mm -hmm. i said two rates i i want to qualify my statement by simply saying there are three rates in the uh, uh, by saying that i what i mean to say is thin goods luxury goods and common man goods these are the three brackets that they should be there so thin yeah. goods are totally out okay. you have to tax them okay. more and the other two brackets that is what i meant and i would like to uh, clarify very clearly uh, that okay. is what we look forward to moving right. to in uh, three rates of taxes 
sooner rather than later. All right, gentlemen, we are going to take a break, but I will continue to talk to you about some of the unaddressed issue. And Haseeb Drabu, I want to talk about this business of moving towards EVA bill, even though that has now been pushed forward in a staggered fashion starting January to April. But most tax experts saying don't go down that route at all. Is there a possibility of reconsideration? That issue and more when we return on CNBC TV 18.